Hi, in this video I wanted to do a little bit of a discussion about air quality, solder fumes and even dust control in the lab. So when I recorded the video about the various different types of solder flux, it was immediately apparent that actually a lot of these fluxes create a hell of a lot of smoke and vapours. And I did actually notice that the room was actually quite smoky after that test. I did have a little bit of irritation with my breathing. So I started to look into various different solutions for extraction in the lab. And first of all, just a little bit of background about what we actually are extracting. Now, there's often the myth that lead solders are really bad for you because when you're soldering, you're breathing in all the fumes. Actually, there's nothing to do with the lead when you're soldering that is harmful in terms of breathing stuff in. You never actually get to the point where you're vaporizing the lead. You're only melting the lead and um, you know creating your solder joint. What you're actually burning is the flux in any of these products and almost every flux product is harmful to the respiratory system. So in particular, rosin-based solders are particularly um, called out in the health and safety um, guidance from the HSE in the UK. Um, because that is one of the most particular types of irritant to the respiratory system. So it can cause wheezing, runny eyes, um, even things like dermatitis. It's also the same for lead-free. In fact, it's often said that the fluxes in these lead-free solders, because they're generally more aggressive to help the lead-free alloy um, create the solder joint, those actually tend to be a little bit more irritant to the respiratory system. And then obviously just using plain flux, especially in large volumes on your soldering, again, is way in excess of what you'd actually get from just soldering uh, with normal solder wire. So in particular, you need to take care if you do any kind of rework type work, you are very much at risk of breathing in potentially harmful fumes. So quite a while back, I think I mentioned it in a video, I bought one of these PM detectors. Uh, the PM 2.5 is a particular standard for measuring particulates in the air and I've been using this on and off just to see what's going on in the lab. Now normally this would sit at about one or two in the lab. When I'm soldering it's somewhere up at around 30, 40 and when I did the video on the flux comparison this was actually sitting up at about three or four hundred. Now I've got a little um, smoke generator. This is actually an EVAP tester for testing for air leaks and that kind of thing in your car. I'll just fire this up just to show you the kind of levels of smoke that would be needed to give relatively high readings. And here we are, we're starting to generate a little bit of smoke, I'm not sure if that's showing up, but uh, if we just blow it in the general direction of that, I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera, but this is uh, sort of way in excess of 1000 on here. Anything above sort of 50 is considered harmful if you're exposed to that for any considerable period of time. So these are the kind of readings where easily if you had this quite close to your workpiece you'd actually get these kind of readings just from soldering. There's not a whole lot of smoke in the air but certainly it picks up these particulates. So if you've got your head directly where you're soldering you're obviously uh, going to breathe that kind of thing in. So there are various methods for eliminating or reducing the smoke that you're likely to get into your lungs. Those can be local extraction, so a kind of thing that you, uh, you've probably most commonly seen on a hose that is near your workpiece and directly extracting into it. Then you've got things like a local fume extractor. It has a large fan in it and it sits near your workpiece work but then has some activated carbon and some filters uh, just locally to that. There's more um, elaborate systems, so ventilation in the room. Uh, recirculation systems and there's also the type of uh, fume extractors that sit on the tip of your soldering iron and extract the smoke at the source. So today I thought we'd have a look at a couple of different products potentially which we could use and, um, and see how effective they actually are. Here's the first device that we're going to have a little look at today and I got this one from Banggood. It's currently selling for $100 and it's the same price on AliExpress and also at eBay. And I don't actually think this is very good value for money. When it turned up, it did make me laugh because it's extremely DIY. You'll see why in a minute. Um, but the idea is that um, you've got your speed control for your fan. You've got your um, LED control because there's a, an LED ring around the outside here. You place this. Um, it's got a little clamp that you can clamp onto the side of your desk. And then you can have this close to your workpiece. 
Um, I think the idea is actually that you have this hanging outside your window because there's no filter in it. So this is just purely extraction to outside or somewhere else um, so that you don't breathe in the fumes directly. Now, this is extremely DIY. If you have a look at how it's been made, basically you've got the strainer from a kitchen sink type arrangement. So this is where you'd normally have your trap at the bottom of your sink. This is where you'd place it through the sink and then you'd have a nut to hold that in place. So you can see that's literally a strainer that would come from a standard kitchen sink and they've just taken out the, um, the actual strainer part of it. There's an LED ring light around the outside and then you can see there's a wire going down the tube that goes all the way down this tube to this blower fan. And that's all there is to it. So this looks like almost like a vacuum type hose. This is just a standard IP65 box that has had this square milled out of it, not even perfectly, and then the blower fan just glued into place. So it's extremely, extremely DIY. I wouldn't recommend that you buy this unless you actually just can't make it yourself, but the actual concept isn't too bad at all. And actually, you could put some filters in here. They wouldn't be very big, but you could sit a filter on top of this fan if you wanted to, um, to have it circulating in your lab so you don't get the heat loss with sticking this outside or having the window open and blowing air out. I've not actually turned it on yet, so I'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, but this is actually, um, you know, conceptually quite good. You, if you built it yourself, you could probably build it for about $50 or something like that, and then it becomes a little bit more attractive and a lot better than these sort of arrangements. Um, let me just grab it these type of fume extractors, which would normally just have a charcoal fan in front of it, you just plug into the mains, but actually they're pretty useless because you never get the kind of airflow uh, from having it near your workpiece enough to get it to blow through the activated carbon. So what I actually have on this device is the fan just blowing through and just blowing away from me so that I'm, so that I'm not breathing the fumes directly. But um, this is potentially a better solution uh, it's just certainly not worth the $100. So it comes with two different power supplies. You can actually buy these as they are uh, from Banggood. I've seen this one in particular. So I think one of them controls the light and one controls the fan. They both seem to be DC control, so not constant current for the LEDs. So uh, I can't see any current limiting in particular. But let's fire it up and see how it works. I've just fired up the fan controller and the fan in this is actually extremely powerful. If we start spinning it up to full speed, we get a lot of airflow from it. And if we put the anemometer in front of it, you can see that reads about 10 meters per second. However, once we put the lid on it, you can hear the tone of the fan change considerably. And if we then measure the airflow that's actually being extracted at full speed, we get about one meter per second. So we've got the fan unit hanging out the window and we've got the extraction nozzle just here, relatively high up from the bench. These systems tend to work a lot better when you allow the smoke to rise into them rather than hoping that they'll draw across the bench into the extraction nozzle. We're going to be using some rapid lead-free solder, which is incidentally the smokiest solder that I've ever come across. But we can demonstrate the problem here. So if I start soldering over here, you'll see it doesn't really make it anywhere near to the extraction nozzle. In fact, it always goes towards the operator's face. Let's move over a little bit more and hopefully we can see the extraction actually in action. And then there we go. So it's pretty much all making it into the extractor, being blown outside, and I'm not breathing in potentially any harmful fumes from this solder. This unit does have a ring light on the nozzle, and actually it's quite good. It would be quite effective for soldering underneath it. You wouldn't need any other lighting. And because it's in a ring, you actually get fewer shadows on the bit that you're soldering. So that's quite nice. But I think generally speaking, this whole thing as a system doesn't quite work. There's a few issues with it. First of all, the airflow that you're getting through this isn't quite enough. And I think that's partly down to this quite restrictive tubing. It's only about 25 millimeters in diameter. I think really, if you were to get hold of some vacuum cleaner 
tubing, which is typically 35 or 40 millimeters, you're going to get better airflow through it, and therefore it'll be a bit more effective. The other thing that you could do is find a fan with a higher uh, pressure when it's blowing air. So this one doesn't seem to have a whole deal of pressure. You could hear the difference when you put the lid on and the airflow reduced quite considerably. If you could find a fan, a centrifugal fan or something like that, that has a bit more uh, pressure behind it, then you might be able to get more airflow up the nozzle. Right, so here is potentially another solution. This is an air purifier from Xiaomi, and this thing is absolutely huge. I didn't quite realize how big it would be, but I was really impressed with the build quality of this thing, and have actually ordered another one. It's about half the height or so, but from the same series, and I thought this might address a couple of issues all at once. So what we've got at the back here is a brightness control, we've got a reset button, and then we've got the particle sensor, and this is just one of those standard particle sensors, like we've got in this unit here. You can just about see where the fan is. But you can actually buy these units from a whole load of places now. So Banggood sell them. You can also buy them from Farnell in the UK under the Honeywell brand. So those ones may well be better quality. And then a bit further down we've got the filter. So the filter is behind this cover at the back. And then you can just slide the actual filter out. And it's really quite large inside. You can just about see we've got the charcoal filter on the inside. And then we've got the particle filter on the outside. You can buy all different types of filters for this unit, including antibacterial ones and that kind of thing. It also claims to reduce pollen in the air if you are a hay fever sufferer. This unit, unfortunately, does have an RFID tag in the bottom, so you can't clean this and try and get more life out of it. This one is consumable controlled, which is a little bit crap. Um, there are smaller units that don't have this. But the filters aren't too badly priced and you can actually buy them from all different types of retailers. I saw that Amazon had them um, as well for about £30. They're designed to last about six months. Um, so we'll see how that goes. You just slide the knob at the bottom to lock it in place. And then when you put the cover on, I think the unit detects that the filter is back in place. So this thing's actually quite a nice unit. It's got a nice OLED on the front of the device with the PM2.5 reading here. It's got the temperature and the humidity as well. And then there's various modes that you can set, either from pressing the button or you can install an app. So if you press the button, it's got sort of a sleep mode, which is reducing the fan speed. It's got what's classed as a healthy mode, which is quite a high fan speed to really get some air circulating. And then on the A, that's sort of the automatic mode. So the fan speed is controlled by the PM2.5 reading. So it modulates up and down depending on how many particulates are in the air. And this is going to be a bit of a longer term experiment, really, because, um, you know, with the readings now, it's reading 61 because of all that smoke we created earlier. It'll be interesting to see how long it takes to get that back down to readings of two or three. From previous experience, even the next day after some soldering, this would still be reading at about 30. I'm hoping that within sort of 30 minutes to an hour or so, this will drop down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back to this in about 30 minutes time and see what the reading actually is. So this unit is really quite impressive. You can already see after only 10 minutes, we're down at seven on here, about six or seven on this unit as well. If we place it on top, um, it actually drops all the way right down to zero. So um, this unit is doing a really good job. I should have recorded the time before and after just to prove that this is actually happening. But like I said, this would take a couple of days for me to get to this kind of reading in the lab after doing a soldering session. So the fact that it can clear this up in about 10 minutes is pretty amazing. Now I'm not suggesting that anyone should go out and buy any of these items. This is more of a discussion type video. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you found any particular good value fume extraction units or means to control the smoke from soldering and that kind of thing, then I would be really interested to hear about that in the comments. The commercial units that are available, you can buy Metcal units, you can buy them under a whole different range of brands. I think there's Quick branded devices. They're all really quite expensive and my experience of them is actually they're really noisy and don't actually behave all that well. You still have to have the nozzle right in the way of your soldering job and they just generally get in the way. So one thing I am contemplating is buying a motor from something like a pneumatic Henry vacuum cleaner, building it into a soundproof box and having some filters in there. 
but then using that gooseneck attachment and the hose uh, along with a speed controller to make my own kind of fume extraction unit but I'm really quite keen on this device like I said it's got potentially a few other features that are quite nice the app works really quite well and uh, like I said I bought another one so I'm going to be deploying this in the house as well just for general smells and to reduce the pollen in the summer so um, yeah uh, this is more of a long-term plan as well to try and test the system so um, you know, I'll probably report back in a few months and see how I've got on with these units. So, as I said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching.